Hi guys, so before we get into the reference guide, I want to mention that that little intro is going to be standard in every episode going forward. It's not going to be the same intro, but I'm going to have different intros depending on the episode. They take a very long time to make, so I hope you guys appreciate them. Please comment down below what you think. Let's start off with some character references. In the hub world, you will occasionally see some symbols that let you speak to citizens from each one of the nations. Occasionally, you'll run into the character Spelunker. Spelunker happens to be a reference to the Spelunker from the popular PC game Spelunky. Spelunky was originally released on the PC back in 2008 and since then has been ported to a number of systems including the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and even on Chrome OS in the form of Spelunky HTML5, which is actually completely free on Chrome OS. The character Broccoli is pretty much reference galore, just about everything about her is a reference. Broccoli herself is a reference to a character named Pachiko from a series called DG Charat. The similarities between these two characters is striking to say the least. For starters, they both are small moe cat girls that ride on some kind of yellow thing named Gemma. Yes, they both have that in common, that's not just Broccoli, but Puchiko apparently also rides on a yellow thing named Gemma. In the Japanese version of the show and of the game, they actually share the same voice actress. In addition to that, they both also end their sentences with the word new. The similarities between the two are so striking that Neptune even breaks the fourth wall by calling Broccoli Puchiko a number of times throughout the game. Oh, your name is Broccoli? You're so cute that I want to call you Puchiko. Lastly, Broccoli's name is a reference to the creators of the DG Kara series, Broccoli. The character Falcom is a reference to the game development studio Nihon Falcom, who is famous for series such as Legend of the Heroes, Wise, and Dragon Slayer. This section is going to be some real life references, so mostly references to stuff in real life. The EXE drive is a reference to the common computer file extension .exe. The .exe file extension means .executable, and executable files are usually meant for the user to be able to launch them, so let's say like a game or Steam or Google Chrome or something along those lines. Wait, you don't know Avenir? Avenir, the company that has a lot of influence over Last Station, actually is a type of font on the computer. Big stretch here, but Neptune's dislike of eggplants might be a reference to how there's a theory that Nintendo had some kind of vendetta against eggplants during the golden age of gaming. The theory in and of itself is, in my opinion, fairly weak, consisting mostly of the fact that eggplants are main villains in both Kid Icarus and Ice Climbers, but it's still a possibility, so I just wanted to throw this out there. There is a link that I'm going to leave in the description to an article I found discussing the theory in more detail, so if you guys want to check that out, link's in the description. Now let's move on to some enemy references. The enemy Super Otaku is meant to be a reference to otaku culture. If you somehow don't know what an otaku is, for starters, the main demographic for this game is otaku culture. But let me give you guys a good explanation of what it is. The best way to describe it is a geek. Someone that is obsessed with either anime, video games, um, cosplay, manga, and stuff like that. That's the best way to describe it. And just like with geeks and nerds and everything like that, there are many stereotypes attached with otakus. Most of them highlighted from this picture right here and the enemy itself. Before I get into this reference, I do want to say massive spoiler alert for the show Madoka Magica. The enemy, Contracted Angel, is actually a reference to Kyubei from Madoka Magica. There are a number of similarities in terms of appearance between the Contracted Angel and Kyubei, and while the similarities are not nearly as striking between these two as between Broccoli and Pachiko, there still are similarities between the two. On screen, I have a side-by-side -side image between Kyubei and the Contracted Angel. For starters, you can see the ring around the Contracted Angel, or really on the bottom of the Contracted Angel, is the same as the rings around Kyubei's ears. You can also see, if you look really, really closely, that the mouth is kind of like a squiggly line, similar to Kyubei's mouth. 
On top of that, you can see these little red ball things, which kind of look similar to Kyubei's eyes. There's the things on the side, which I'm guessing are supposed to be similar to the ears on Kyubei. Lastly, there's the name, Being Contracted Angel, which is similar to what Kyubei's job was in the show. Kyubei is the main villain in the show. Kyubei's job really is to trick a bunch of girls into signing a contract with him that turn them into magical girls and give them a free wish, but eventually they will turn into witches. And in which case, other magical girls will have to stop them. There is a reason for this outlined in the show, but the idea is that at first he's seen, seen like an angel for giving them this power and also for giving them a free wish, but in reality, it is a trick. That's why he's an enemy. The huge doggo is a reference to the behemoth slime from Dragon Quest. In this clip, I got a two for one. On the left, you see the shoe bill. On the right, you see the per four. The shoe bill is a reference to a real bird called a shoe bill. And on the right, you can see the per four, which is a reference to the PS4. In terms of appearance, the shoe bill looks almost exactly like a real life shoe bill. The Per 4 has a number of references to the PS4 in and of itself. For starters, the Per 4 is blue, which is a reference to how the PS4 is normally associated with the color blue. On top of that, the part the Per 4 is in the same shape as the PS4. I think it's like a some kind of like hexagon or something. I don't know what it is. On top of that, there's the fact that it's called the Per 4, which in a way sounds like PS4. Per 4, PS4. It's not exactly the same, but it sounds somewhat similar. Let's end off the episode with some dialogue references. When Neptune says that they're looking for revengeance, that's a reference to the game Metal Gear Solid Revengeance. What, what should I do? It's gotta be looking for revengeance! I don't want to be left for dead, so please be nice! That audio bite right there, I don't want to be left for dead, so please be nice, is an obvious reference to the game Left for Dead. This whole entire section is a reference to Mario, and if you didn't spot that, then it really should be obvious. So right here, Neptune is saying, I know jump, right? Jumping being Mario's thing, and like saying wahoo, which is what Mario does in some games when he jumps. <laughs> then IF comes, and she further proves that by saying, hey, why not grow a mustache and then jump? So yeah, pretty much a reference to Mario. Let's end off the video with a little self-contained reference. At one point in the game, Neptune and the game go to the Planetoon Basilicom to speak to the staff there. At there, the staff decides to repeat the names of the people he's talking to, being IF, Kampa, and Neptune. But he mistakes Neptune's name for Neptunia, at which point Neptune corrects him. Obviously, that's a reference to the name of the game being Hyperdimension Neptunia instead of Hyperdimension Neptune. The main reason I'm actually bringing this reference up is not because of the fact that it is a reference like that, rather because I found a very interesting article talking about why they named it Hyperdimension Neptunia instead of Hyperdimension Neptune. I will leave the link in the description. But the main reason why, and the article goes into much greater detail on other things as well, like how they make the games and a lot of specific details about just the games in general. It's a very, very interesting article. Very long, very interesting though. It's like a whole uh, interview with one of the developers. But, and I recommend you read it. I'll have it linked in the description below. And pretty much they called it Hyperdimension Neptun uh, Neptunia because they were scared of a lawsuit. That's pretty much why. Hi guys, thank you guys so so much for watching the video. If you made it this far, then congratulations. You just watched what I just spent three months working on. And in the background, you can see the absolute finishing touches, the final render. Um, it's really the second to last render since I'm also going at the re-render with the intro and this clip right here that I'm recording right now. But essentially, it's the final main render, because after this, it really is more of a just, just a finishing touches render. But it's finally finished, it took me three months, and it was well worth it. This probably is the best video I've ever made, ever. So yeah, 
I do want to mention a couple things before you guys go. For starters, I'm going to be making another one, obviously. Episode 4 most likely will be going live sometime within the next month or two. It depends on a couple things, but I'm working on a couple of improvements for the next episode. And I'm also going to start looking into creating a basic voice synthesizer for uh, going forward so that way the characters themselves could do the intro. That is not going to be ready for episode 4, I could guarantee that much. But hopefully, I'm assuming it is possible, I have a good idea on how it should work, um, and hopefully, assuming that I can figure it out, it should be ready by episode 5 or 6. I'm also going to be working on some general improvements for episode 4. It should take a lot faster than this time around, since this time around, I have a perfect understanding on how I'm supposed to actually create all the templates, and I already have a lot of the templates ready already, and I already have everything practically done in terms of prepping everything so all I have to do is put everything together really in terms of the research and recording and everything that's still going to take the usual amount of time which is why I'm saying it's going to take anywhere between one to two months but I'm going to try and have it done as quickly as possible um, production of it is going to start next week since I want to take a week off. This has been absolutely insane to make. I've been doing this so much and it was so hard for me to make this. So I'm finally glad it's finished and I want to take a week off, work on a couple other videos and actually get around to using my Oculus Rift, which I just got. I just got an Oculus Rift. Um, couple other things, um, in the description, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is going to be a bunch of links, uh, a couple of which you should know about. There's obviously going to be this regular links to the steam guide um, there's going to be a link to a page where you could show your uh, like you could just uh, suggest your own references that I might not be able to find so that way you guys could get a shout out for mentioning it um, there's going to be a couple other links like that there's going to be a link to Google Drive where you could download the folder which I use to make all this it's going to be updated over time so check there regularly I wouldn't say once a week I'd say once every two three weeks because I will update it regularly and you guys could download all the assets that I'm using for this. I will have version numbers so that way you guys know if it's updated or if it's not. I'll also have videos that will go live which will say when uh, each version of it is going to go live. So right now it's more of a beta version since I'm still working on perfecting everything, uh, perfecting all the templates and everything. But if you want to make your own custom Neptune intros or dialogue or whatever, then everything's there. The only real require, like you could use it absolutely free, no problem. I'm not responsible if um, Compile Heart or uh, um, idea factory do put like a strike on your channel I don't think they're going to they really shouldn't I actually even contacted them a couple weeks back because I was having trouble getting a couple of the letters for one of the things and they seem to be fine with it so I don't think you should get into any trouble by using the assets because there is an argument that even though they're screenshotted from the game that technically it might be their assets it's this whole weird thing with fair use and on a technical level it should be completely covered under fair use because it's parody but this is YouTube so anything goes on YouTube really but um, you guys are free to use that uh, the only thing really I suggest is that please give me a shout out either in the description of the video or in the video itself because it was not easy for me to make this this folder and these assets even though yes I didn't really make most of it what I did is that I screenshot everything I put it all together I figured out how to do it it wasn't easy like I didn't actually draw the assets. Obviously, I'm not a good drawer. I screenshot the game. I took. I ripped the actual assets. None of it was easy. So yeah, if you don't believe me, go try it yourself. I will have a, a video tutorial explaining how to do everything, in addition to the text tutorial that there is bundled with the actual guide. So if you guys want to do that, then that's fine. And yeah, so besides for that, I can't really think of anything else. Um, other than the fact that I do have a Patreon for the reference guide, I I don't really expect you guys to to do much with it. Like I don't expect you guys to donate, but if you like what I'm doing, then just drop a dollar or two or whatever it is, because this thing, this whole series is unmonetized. 
I'm getting paid absolutely nothing for it. And it's a very hard series to make, very lengthy series to make. It takes a lot of my time. This video right here took three months. That's three months I could have been using to do other things. And I'm not getting paid a penny for it. So if you guys do want to donate to me, I'm not expecting you to. You don't have to. You don't like the Patreon really is more for professional, like just to look professional than anything. But it would be really awesome if you guys to donate. So yeah, other than that, make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. I do have some cool videos coming up, including some reviews of the Oculus Rift, uh, the Boost Snowball Ice, um, a comparison between the Boost Snowball Ice and the standard Boost Snowball. I'm going to possibly be doing a Let's Play of the... of one of the rebirth games i'm not sure which yet most likely rebirth 3 in virtual reality using the oculus rift um chances are i'm also going to be doing a video of a anime theory that uh, akihiko kaiba from sword art online is actually the good guy and i have a lot of videos planned in general so yeah make sure to like favor and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video